Newcross City Council, regular meeting, Monday, July 7, 2014, at 7 p.m. will now come to order. Call to order, please. Roll call, please. Roll call. Mayor McLaughlin? Here. Mr. McIntyre? Here. Mr. Zambach? Present. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Rick Lowry? Here. Mr. Craybach? Here. Mr. Mike Lowry? Here. All right. All present. Thank you. Uh, before we continue, if you have a cell phone, if you would mind putting it on vibrate or turn it off, please, so it doesn't interrupt the meeting. Certainly appreciate it. We will now have an invocation by Pastor Jeff Christmas from the First Baptist. Good evening, Pastor. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful for a beautiful day. Uh, the weather outside sometimes uh, shows uh, frightful conditions, but Father, we're grateful that you are there to guide us and to care for us. We thank you for this meeting. We thank you for the government officials you've put in our lives, and we pray that uh, the meeting would be most productive tonight, and also, Lord, uh, that you'd be honored. Thank you so much for how you bless us, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Appreciate it. I would do the Pledge of Allegiance. Will you use the flag in the back, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, if I may have uh, action on the minutes of the regular meeting, June 16, 2014. So Second. I'm moving along. Thanks, Jeff. I'm sorry, I missed it. Uh, Dick was first and John was Somebody second on it. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. You second? Yes. Well, John, it was tied. It was tied. <laughs> Can we have two seconds? I'll give it to Mr. Reynolds. You have the first one, John. That's okay. He's got very high. No discussion? Any discussion on the minutes? You're doing such a wonderful job, there's no discussions. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Craybocker. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Pass seven to zero. Thank you. Okay, communications. Any communications this evening? None tonight. No communications. All right, city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, tonight I'd like to start with the service discussion. I believe Mr. Pitko had an update for us. Yes, thank you, Mr. Jones. Good evening, Mayor and Council, members of the public. I just have one update. We have received all the equipment for the uh, crossing light signal uh, at the Tecumseh Trail. Those uh, anchors for those poles will be placed sometime in the middle of next week and then our guys will be doing the rest of the erection of the signs and stuff. So hopefully within the next couple weeks, they'll be completed. Good to hear. Yep. Feel more safe at that point, hopefully. <laughs> They'll know they're running over you at that point. <laughs> Quite possible. <laughs> okay, continuing then with the informational items in your packet. Um, the first item, the income tax committee. We did have a meeting last week, and I just wanted to give you an update. Uh, we had five people attend. Um, we're still, we've got three or four that still want to come, so we're trying to work with everybody's schedule. Uh, the next meeting will be August the 13th at 10 o'clock in the morning. We encourage anybody that would like to participate in that committee to come. It's here, right here at the Shelter House. Um, at that next meeting, we hope to be setting a timeline for our goals as far as when we want to be presenting things to the public and um, getting flyers ready. Mrs. Manman did agree to be our treasurer, so she was going to go to the Board of Elections. She's really familiar with the procedures involved in getting that taken care of, so she's going to help us with that. Um, on that same note, with the income tax, you may have seen in the paper in the Springfield News and Sun uh, today that the city of Lebanon is also considering two tax issues similar to what we are doing. And I heard Springfield was also going to be doing something in the fall. So it tends to be the way people are leaning to raise revenues well, for the city. Every community has the same problem we have. We don't have the money to be able to fix the infra infrastructure that we need to try and fix. Right, so, right. That's the problem. 
In your packet also is a copy of a thank you letter I had sent to Mr. and Mrs. Vargas. Uh, they were the ones who had met with Mr. Kitko and I and uh, uh, one of the concerned citizens regarding um, soccer being played in Brubaker Park. I'm happy to say I did get an email from the citizen who said he feels like it's been fixed, that they haven't had any more situations. Um, we are also still looking into trying to find some nets and goals to put in Smith Park so that they'll have actually a better location than they originally had because uh, they didn't have any nets or anything at you know where they were um, this was I believe I got this in your packet the email that uh, Chief Phillips had given me regarding fireworks safety it was if it wasn't in your packet I think it was at least in, in your mailbox um, basically he just asked me to get the word out for um, fire safety or fireworks safety uh, the number of injuries every year, eye injuries in particular, eye safety. Um, I just saw on the news today somebody amputated their foot with fireworks. So, you know, it's just, it, it, it's not worth it. <laughs> you know, so please just, you know, take, take it seriously because it is, you can buy them in everywhere, but it doesn't mean you should. <laughs> so. He just asked me to pass that along to get the word out. I do have a copy of this memo regarding different statistics at the city building if anybody would like to stop by and read it um, just to give you some more information regarding it. And one other thing that was not in your packet, I wanted to remind everybody about our community garage sale that is coming up on Saturday, July the 19th. We have some of these flyers in the city building. I also have some here tonight if you were interested in picking them up. Um, basically what we're trying to do is make one list of people who want to participate that day in a garage sale and Randy is going to put that list in the Springfield or the New Carlisle News that Wednesday before which is the 16th and that way if you want to hit all the sales you'll have a list of where they are located and you can get the most most for your time you'll all be able to get a little map going and hit them all so um, pick up a brochure and we hope you all participate and that is the Saturday the 19th from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. But if you want to close yours earlier or stay a little later, that's entirely up to you. And that was all I had tonight. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Council John. Um, the deeds for the uh, problems. Any, any uh, what, what's happening with Twin, Twin Creeks? Creeks? Yeah, Twin Creeks. Yeah, yeah the uh, prosecutor's office has already filed, uh, if it's eight of the 20... Eight. 28, uh, uh, which we're reopening because of the issues that uh, there were with the service that the prosecutor originally obtained on those foreclosure cases. Uh, I just got an email today from uh, the assistant prosecutor, Bill Hoffman, who says he has the next batch, which I assume will be about a third, uh, for me to come in uh, tomorrow to sign these motions to the court to reopen the cases. And my assumption will be that the next third, uh, and they, they need to spread these out because they're fairly work intensive for their office. Uh, and I assume the next third will come uh, maybe in a month, month and a half. Uh, the, the hope is that we're essentially reopening these cases to make up for the deficiencies in properly serving uh, all the necessary defendants in the original foreclosure case. Nothing is going to change. Nobody came and contested the foreclosures the first time, so nobody's going to come and contest the foreclosures this time. But the problem was, because there was a, a, this deficiency in properly serving some of the defendants that should have been served originally, that when buyers come to buy the properties and their lenders do a title search and see that there's this thing that nobody in a million years is actually going to raise as an issue in real life, but is an issue for uh, the title insurance company that is, you know, protecting the lenders, you know, then that's where we run into a problem. Uh, so that's why we're going through all this jumping through of hoops to redo this, to make sure that there's no issue and that any buyer and more particularly their lender is not going to have any problems and that we'll be able to sell all those properties without any <coughs> kind of problems in the future. Good. Anyone questions on that? Yes. Oh, on Twin Creeks? Yes, no. on Twin Creeks if we could. Not at this time, sorry. Anyone else Twin Creeks? Uh, the question I have is have we kept 
the buyer that was interested in those, have we kept him apprised of what's going on? Yes, I've been uh, in I know touch. he has an attorney that was I've been in touch with his attorney, and uh, uh, frankly, that buyer had been interested for some time in the past and uh, is disappointed as we are. Obviously, we'd like to get on the ball about selling these properties, uh, but uh, I'm assured by his attorney that he's still going to be interested once this process is question that I would have, you're saying they're doing in, in thirds. If they get the third ready, would he go ahead at that point? Have you approached that you with know, him? No, I have not asked his attorney that. Um, there might be something know. to ask because we had heard that he would like to start construction mm -hmm. on some things out there. You know, you know that's, a, that's a good question, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor. I'll, I'll find out about that. It's okay, not, so it didn't really occur to me, but it's, it's a good question. Once we complete yeah. whatever group we do, there's we no can. reason why we shouldn't be able to go forward as long we'll as we Go ahead and willing. sell them at that point. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Yeah, that would be yeah. Yes, sir. I think we've got a question regarding Was there a question on Twin Creeks? But there is, but oh. not concerning that issue. It's something else. So go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Howie, uh, I went on the bike trail yesterday, and the bridge had like that, I don't know what was on it originally, but it all been broken off. We were supposed to get some put back on, like the sand type material that was on top of the bike trail bridge. And that's supposed to happen sometime this year. I was wondering when. We had, a, we had an epoxy with a sand in it from the construction. Found out that it, um, it didn't some, for some reason, wasn't compatible. One wood was too wet. So we had the contractor remove it and we're just going to leave it uh, seasoned for probably about a year or two um, as long as there's no slippery conditions uh, we're going to trim the trees back once the wood is seasoned we're looking at putting a polyurethane down or urethane and just sprinkling some sand in a very light layer so are we covering it or are they covering it because it was like an experimental thing they had never tried before and we paid to do it uh miss jones and i had a meeting with odot and basically they met all the guidelines of the manufacturer there is no I, I mentioned about the wood being a wet because it's treated and they put it down within probably three weeks of that lumber being in place and there's no official guideline for when you place stain sealer epoxy on treated lumber it's just it's just a uh, a common builders practice so we've been fighting that because we had an extra invoice come in for that uh, fought him with it, and we ended up getting TCC to cover 80% of it. So, yeah, it was a, it was kind of a mess. All right, so we have to pay again to have it resurfaced here in the next year or so. Yeah, if we decide to resurface it, if it never gets, uh, if we don't get the use like some do to get that uh, worn surface, we may not even put anything on it. But if it starts to get slick due to moss, then we will go ahead and um, roll on a urethane. That that what was put on there was about. Uh, I want to say the price was twelve to fifteen thousand to put on, and then about ten thousand to take back off. And, and what we paid for all that, even yes. though they, even though it was experimental and uh, not experimental, it was um, it was placed according to the manufacturer's guidelines of the epoxy. However, we felt that you don't normally put that on treated lumber, but there's nothing in any kind of rules, guidelines, builder's codes that say that you can. All right. Okay, anyone else? Anything? Yes. Has anyone from the Twin Creeks Homeowners Board Association been in touch with you? I left a message for him probably two months ago. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard anything further. Okay. Um, and the reason I'm asking, I know that there's two people on the board right now. There's supposed to be seven. They can't get anyone to surf. I was at the same meeting you was when we were talking about this banding, but they're not cutting the grass. The retention pond is at least, the grass is at least two feet high. Yeah, Randy may have already addressed that, but I'll And they only have a meeting once a year now, so. Okay. I, I left him a message, because he, he wanted us to pursue doing something, but we had to find out, you know, right. what exactly they wanted, and he's never come back. Yes, and nobody can find out anything, because there's no, like I said, there's virtually two members now, but. Something needs to be done about the grass. Okay, I'll, okay. I'll bring it to Randy's attention. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Did you ask Mr. Michael? I did. Mr. Kicker, I had a question. It's, it's about streets, so I don't know if you'll be able to answer this or maybe Ms. Jones will have it. Um, when you are going down, when you're going on South Main, you're leaving the, you can't see this, I don't know why I'm holding this up, you can't see it. <laughs> I'll right. explain to you. When you're, when you're leaving the, the downtown business area and you're heading towards the Methodist Church, like you're leaving town going towards Park Lane, you come to the intersection where Jefferson and Maine meet each other. You know, you're at the, the waterbed stores right here. 
Oftentimes, people, and by people I mean myself usually, um, there'll be someone going straight, and there'll be just enough space onto the right for someone to pull, pull in beside them and then turn right at that light. Mm -hmm. However, the, the issue is, is that there's, not a, there's no paint there dividing, saying this is a straight lane, this is a turn lane. My question is, is it okay for people to do that, or is that something they're not supposed to do? There should, well, first of all, the parking area should have some yellow there which is about 25 feet back from the radius. Are you saying that there's no yellow on the curb? There, there may be. I just see people pulling over the turn all the yeah, time. Yeah, it, it is common not. for people waiting at that light to, um, to go around uh, traffic there and proceed going straight through. However, I know that it's supposed to be illegal. I have a family member that actually did that and got into an accident and was found at fault because it's not two lanes there. It's a parking lane and one lane of it's traffic. It's just wider for someone to park, but it's not, it's not intended for two. Right, so going around to the right is actually illegal. Okay, and I know there's no sign that says, hey, going around the right's illegal. I don't think there's a sign that exists yeah. for that, but that's something you're, you're not to do. Right. So if you like me, I park in the middle so there's not enough room for them to go around. That's probably a good idea. <laughs> thank you. I was thank you for that. I was just, I'm illegal. I'm a violator. I just wanted to tell you that. <laughs> I do it all the time. <laughs> when they're turning left, you go around and then head on home. The Anyone else? Any other Everybody. questions? You don't want to keep track of it. They'll be after me now now that I've said that. <laughs> All right, I guess we are friends. I do have one other, I'm sorry. The sign at Smith Park, the Smith Park sign as you come in the entrance. I've asked about that mm -hmm. previously. It's in really bad repair as far as the paint and so forth on it. Have we approached any of the churches or anyone that they may have somebody that, that would volunteer their time to be able to? I have an approach. Up. Usually they approach us asking for projects, and we haven't really heard from anybody this year. Uh, uh, several of our park signs need to be, well, the Brubaker one needs to be rebuilt. It's been broken, and then a couple of them need to be repainted. I, I've noticed that, too. That I have a look close enough. I'm not sure if there's structural damage or if it just needs a good coat of uh, paint. The one in Swift Park, yeah. the one that you come in, the entrance, is deteriorating from paint. I mean, it's all coming chipped. off yeah. and chipping yeah. off. Yeah, when the church calls me back, because right now one of their um, church goers was an Eagle Scout, and his Eagle Scout project was building duck houses down along in the swamp area. Um, but when one of them come back, or I'll ask them about uh, doing some updates on the signs. I know they've done signs for us before. Right. Mm -hmm. I think one of the churches, or maybe a Boy Scout, redid that sign previously, I believe. But would it not hurt to call up the churches, the pastors, and ask them if they have someone that maybe could take on a project like that? Sure. Something we could do. Mr. Christmas was just here. Did you ask him? I did ask him. Oh, okay. See, I'm ahead of the game on that. <laughs> I said, could you check with your congregation and see? Maybe we could check with the other pastors and see if that's something. They may have someone in their congregation that would like a project like that. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, we're done with the city manager's report. Now we're at comments from members of the public. Is there a public out there that would like to speak to them? <laughs> would you go to the podium, please, and identify yourself and let us know what you'd like to say? My name is Valerie Herdman, and I am one of three of the managers down at the New Carlisle City Pool. And I am here to give you a follow-up of our Citizen Appreciation Day. And first off, before we go any further, I want to thank Mike Lowry, Kim Jones, Howie Kitko, and Victoria Portner from the city or the city offices that um, blessed us with their presence down there that evening at the pool. We had 143 people come through our door. And that was a very great turnout considering it was a rainy evening. Um, we'd actually closed the pool during the day due to the rain and the um, overcast skies that came through and then reopened that evening for the pool party. Um, Good Vibrations was there and they provided uh, music that many of the patrons requested. And we had, I would say we had children ranging from maybe two to adults that were in their 70s that were there enjoying the evening. It was a great night. We had combo meals in our concession stand and we sold 26 combo meals to people down there at the pool. And a combo meal consisted of a hot dog, a bag of chips, a small pop, or a slice of pizza, a bag of chips, and a small pop for uh, $2 and $3. So, you know, you could have come down for a great time with your family. 
We've had many people contact us through the New Carlisle um, pool page that we have on Facebook um, telling us what a great time they had and we've had people come throughout our, from further outside of our city back to the pool now to visit. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it was a nice thing to do and I would like to see it next year again. And I would like to see every single one of you come down next year. Um, even if it's just to visit, um, it was a great opportunity to connect people in our community and um, it was a good time and I think we all had a great time. Um, there was dancing on the deck and everyone was sad to see it end at 8 o'clock, so it was a good time. And I just wanted to thank you first off for giving us that opportunity as a citizen myself for providing that opportunity for people in our community. So. Thank you. I think Mr. Lowry would like to say something on that. This is Mr. Lowry. Would. Uh, well, it was, it was a great time. I mean, I enjoyed it. Even with the rain, it was it was shocking how many people showed up, but it, it was a really nice time. There was older people out there dancing, younger, and it was, it was a really good time. But I asked you this there, and I'm going to ask while everyone's here listening, what do you think now that we've done it once of doing it for a longer period of time? My concern with that is the um, staffing of the guards. And um, I am, my brain is already thinking about how we can handle it. And I would like to see it for a longer time next year, um, whether I have guards that are on call, um, because you know I don't want to pay the guards if we don't need them, but I would definitely have guards. Um, I'm thinking about putting them on call and then letting them all came, come in. Um, that night, I didn't know what to expect. Right. I had every single one of my guards there that night because I didn't know what to expect. And then I ended up not needing them all, so some even went off the clock and continued to stay. And so they volunteered their time to enjoy the party with the kids and the patrons. But I would like to see it longer, whether we go, um, you know, like three to the evening, or um, I don't know if we could go all day yet. Um, that's a big thing to take on. But um, I've had different people um, ask me about making it longer for next year. So. Good. Super. Mr. Lowry, you had? Yes. Yeah. First and foremost, I want to apologize for not being there. I planned to be there. Unfortunately, there was a pole hit out on New Carlisle Pike yes, to an accident. I had no power and I had a sump pump running, so I had to run a generator and I could not leave. But I did plan to be there. I was, however, there the next day and I spoke with Jamie and asked some of the same questions that was just asked here. And I want to tell you that I am going to get together with the city manager and ask about longer and expanding not only to the pool. Uh, I have a thought that there are there is a lot of talent in New Carlisle that would like to be showcased and would probably do it for free right here in the park. And just think about that. But I, I thank all you guys for doing it down there. But, and I also would like to see it longer and bigger. Okay. And once again, I'm sorry for not being there, but my basement came first. I couldn't let it fly. I agree. <laughs> I just wanted to update Anyone everyone. Anyone else? Hi. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. How Just real know? quick, before I left that night, I asked Val, because our goal was to get people who don't normally come to the pool, come to the pool, and I think we said about half. So yes. half of the people there were, you're not your daily or season pass holders. Yes. So that was, we, we did reach a, a good goal of getting people who don't come to the pool at all show up. And I will say, I had several people thank me specifically, and I'm just the manager. So <laughs> I, they thanked us for having it down there and giving them the opportunity. Um, there was people, a lot of people there I didn't recognize. And as the manager down there, you start to know who your season passes are and your people that come every day that pay. And there was a lot of people there we didn't recognize. So I think, you know, it was nice to promote our community. Um, next year, if we do do it, I would like to, um, like you were saying, offer businesses down there where maybe they could, you know, show what we have here in New Carlisle. It would be a great opportunity to showcase our town. I have one request for Mr. Zambach and myself. We could do it on a different night besides Wednesday night. We've already decided that. We will. We're, we're committed to the little white balls on Wednesday night. <laughs> That's what I heard, so that is just fine. Or I we do, would have been there, would we not, Mr. Zambach? Yes, we would. I will say, um, we get a bigger attendance through the week, so that is something that if you choose to do this next year, keep that in mind because um, through the weekend, parents don't necessarily, um, they, they spend family time together and a lot of our, our attendance is through the week. That's where we get a lot of our turnouts. So. Thank you for all your hard work on the pool. We appreciate it. I enjoy it. it. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Anyone else in the audience like to speak? Okay, we will continue on. Committee reports. None tonight. Resolutions, none tonight. None tonight. Ordinances. Mr. Collier, if you would, please. Yes, ordinance 14-32, public hearing in action tonight. 
an ordinance amending chapter 238 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding a division of fire. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Motion to adopt ordinance 14 32. Second. The reason that this had to come back in front of council is you remember we passed everything about a month ago, June 2nd, it says. Um, and section 23803 regarding compensation was established, making the on call pay um, a, an actual status. However, we didn't set the compensation, which was my fault. I forgot to put it in there. We had talked about it in the memo to you, but I had not put it in the actual ordinance. So I couldn't just arbitrarily set it myself. So we had to do it by ordinance. So it's not a repeat, actually. <laughs> Council, any questions? Mr. Collier, call for the vote. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybock? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Pass 7 to 0. Thank you. <clears throat> when you're ready, if you go forward, please. Ordinance 14 33, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the disposal of unneeded, obsolete, or unfit city property. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Make a motion to adopt Ordinance 14 33. Second. Um, we have, this is over the course of probably four or five years, we've accumulated old printers, old copiers, and we are running out of space, so we need to get rid of them. Goodwill has a very nice program where they will come and pick it up from businesses and organizations. Um, we're going to work with Jason's company to get the hard drives removed from all the computers and from the copiers, and then we'll be able to donate. They'll pick it up, and we will have more space in our office. Any questions? Council, yes. So you said that the hard drives are being removed, so there's right. no way that any personal information from any residents will pass along either to Goodwill or to whoever acquires these computers Correct. after work. Correct. Right, so everyone's data is secured. Correct. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Mr. Carter? Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Pass 7 to 0. Ordinance 14 34E, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing city manager to enter into an agreement with Ohio Public Entity Consortium Healthcare Cooperative. For health care insurance for city employees and declaring an emergency. Mr. Mayor, move to adopt yes. ordinance 14-34E. Second. Um, our health insurance for the employees actually does not expire with the anthem until the end of this year, but we are always open to the opportunity to save money. And we were approached by this consortium, um, which is relatively new. Cities were not the county has had a consortium for a while, but smaller cities couldn't join it to be able to get lower health insurance. Um, so when they approached us and asked us if we wanted to sit down and talk, Mrs. Harris and I sat down and, and met with a representative, and they are going to be able to offer us the exact same coverage. It won't be with Anthem, it will be back with Medical Mutual, who we had before we had Anthem, and they will guarantee a, a rate cut of our current premium of two and a half percent through all of next year. So the rest of this year and all of next year. Um, if we had stayed with Anthem, we would have started negotiating for a new rate again, like this October, November, and who knows what it would have been. It was 12% increase, I think, last year. So no increase in an actual two and a half percent decrease. I thought it was a good idea to try it. It's no change for our employees as far as what their coverage is. Um, our insurance committee met, which is a committee made up of union and management, and we all uh, unanimously agreed that we should go for it. Um, so that is what the, the reason that this is an emergency is they need all the paperwork in their office by eight, August 1st in order to have it start September 1st, with uh, July 7th being so late in the month for our first meeting, it was going to put us too late to do it as um, a regular ordinance. So we made an emergency. Council, questions? Yes. So, 
next year we'll start with this new com with the uh, consortium. Oh, we'll start God. this September. This September, do we have to pay like a cancellation fee at all? For no, she guarantee, and I have it in writing, that we we pay Anthem per month, and that we can cancel it effective. Well, we'll cancel it effective August thirty first, September first being the f new date for this. All right. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Rackham. I know when we were going through, when we had the negotiating um, part of the, the contract with the city employees, getting on this uh, county consortium was something that we wanted to do, but it wasn't open to us, and I think that was frustrating a lot of people on council. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad to see that it was able to, we were able to be a part of this now, and not only does it save the city money, but the collective bargaining unit for the employees is behind it. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of the best of both worlds. And, and we don't have a cancellation fee, which is which is great news as well. And it's not the same consortium as the county. It's a different one. But within, but, within the same frame of right. how it works. Mad River Township, Bethel Township are two organizations around here that have already joined the same group. And I've talked to their tra uh, trustees. They're very happy with them. So I think we will be too. So far, they've been good to work with. Good to hear. Anyone else, Council? Mr. Collier? Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybach? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Pass seven to zero. Ordinance 14-35E, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance adopting the tax budget for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2015 and submitting same to the auditor of Clark County, Ohio and declaring an emergency. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Motion to adopt ordinance 14-35E. Second. This is something we do every year. Um, it's required to be in the county offices by July the 20th why, is why we had to do this as an emergency. Um, I, I want to commend Mrs. Harris. She, um, she went through this. It wasn't boilerplate. She didn't just copy last year's and went through and she met with Mr. Kitko and I and Mr. Bridge and we sat for a couple hours going through the line by line seeing where we could cut, where we could move money to make sure what we were doing was a really good picture of what we're looking for. Keeping that in mind, it is the framework that we go with from this to do our regular budget in March. Um, it'll look similar to this, but there could be a lot of changes too, just depending on how things go. But um, she did do a lot of work and I appreciated that. Council questions? Any questions? Thank you, Mrs. Harris, for all your hard work. I know. You're coming in new, and we appreciate all your hard work to get it ready for us. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to work with you. This is good one. Council, no questions. Okay, Mr. Collier. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Craybacher. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Pass seven zero. Okay, we're now at other business. Is there any other business? Council, anyone have anything? Audience, anyone in the audience have anything at all? Other business? Staff? Nothing at all? All right. Mr. Collier, would you go ahead and read uh, the rest of that, please? City office closed. So yes, forth. Mayor. City offices will be closed on Monday, September the 1st uh, for Labor Day. There'll be a joint government meeting Monday, September the 29th, 2014 at 630 here at Smith Park Shelter House. And the New, New Carlisle Crime Watch meeting will be this Wednesday, July the 9th at 630 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. Okay, I have a question on that, the New Carlisle Crime Watch meeting. Do we have some council members that are going to show up? I'll be we have two of them showing up. Again, Wednesday nights are not good for two of us. So <laughs> make it another night and I'll try to do it. Oh, no, it's no, so no. much fun torturing those little white balls. <laughs> they drown so easy. <laughs> Executive session, we have none tonight. Is there anyone who'd like to say anything before we finish here? Nothing? Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to adjourn. Thank you, sir. We are adjourned.